Oh, hey, you arrived. Just a second and I'm with you. Everybody knows that when autumn arrives, leaves fall off the trees. We know why, we know how, we know when, but we do not exactly know the timing of that. We don't know yet. Now that's a surprise. I thought that we, or at least biologists, had known for ages how leaves know when to fall. Well, even scientists cannot answer this. Why this tree let fall the leaves before that other one? Why this species gets the leaf later than the other one? And this is important because with climate change, the environmental conditions are changing. The leaves, the leaves can fall earlier or later, and this has a feedback effect on our climate. We are the University of Flanders, and today we are at a plant testing field of the University of Antwerp, where we meet Professor Matteo Campioli. He's a plant ecologist, and he's been doing research on the falling of leaves for more than 20 years. Matteo wants to know what's really going on in trees and what is really triggering the colouring and falling of leaves. How do leaves in autumn know when it's time to fall? Leaves fall in deciduous trees. Deciduous trees have developed to let their leaf fall in autumn. They make powerful leaves that can make a lot of photosynthesis, very rich in nutrients, but such a leaves cannot withstand the winter condition and for sure not be there for the next spring. But before they drop, the leaves turn yellow, orange, red, beautiful autumn colors. But why is that? The changing of the color is actually an indication that the uh, good material in the leaves is actually degraded and take it, take it back by the tree in the woody organs so that it can be stored and be reused for the next spring. One of the first uh, things that is uh, uh, recycled is chlorophyll. The chlorophyll is the green pigment, very important for taking the light. That chlorophyll is used in photosynthesis, a chemical reaction in which energy from the sun is used to convert the carbon dioxide in the air into glucose, some sort of sugar. A byproduct of this reaction is oxygen gas, which the tree releases. The glucose is used by the plant as food and building material. The longer a tree keeps its leaves, the longer it can photosynthesize and the more nutrients it can absorb. But on the other end, it is important that the tree start this senescence process earlier, because then all the good things can be recycled. Those trees uh, we kept uh, outside uh, since uh, uh, the spring uh, in April. And then we see that are really completely the senescent process. But some of the trees we also moved inside in experimental condition where they were exposed to different light and temperature. Why this? because we know that light and temperature have an effect, but we don't know exactly which one is the most important. Also, we don't know if a temperature of 10 uh, degrees Celsius is important, or maybe which, which tree let fall the leaves when the temperature is 8. We don't know if a day length of 10 hours, for instance, is uh, uh, enough to give a signal to the tree to start the falling of the leaves. Well, uh, I grew up uh, in a region around Milan. Uh, however, since young, uh, I like to go in the few natural reserves that were still not built, close to the rivers or uh, in the, the magnificent forest in the mountain. And after 20 years, uh, I'm here, so I'm a plant ecologist. So the researcher that uh, look at the interaction between our environment, our climate, and the living organism. Okay, 
And here we see our uh, young tree exposed to the August condition. So we have a temperature of 18 Celsius degree and uh, a day length similar to the one in August. Even now, here is November. And indeed, with more temperature and more light, the tree actually delayed the senescence. This we see visually, but even better, we can measure the chlorophyll, 2.7 in a rather yellow leaf, and 7 for a more green leaf. By measuring this uh, index during all the autumn, from August until November, then we can really see the degradation of the chlorophyll and so the progression of the senescence and of the leaf coloration. OK, so light and temperature play a role. But when leaves drop exactly is more complicated than it seems. To find out what's going on, Matteo not only monitors the little trees in his test lab, but also mature, big ones around the world. It is my idea that to understand the dynamics in autumn of the leaves, we should not only focus on the leaves, but look what happened to the tree in general. So that's why we collect also data, for instance, on the wood and on the roots. OK, so let's take uh, the second sample. What we take is a small sample of wood every week from end of July until November. But what we look is really the last uh, weeks of growth. Then we send this to the lab, and then finally from here, here is our, our cell that we can study to see the expansion in the biomass. From this we can see uh, that like 10% of the cell are still active, then the next week 3%, and then two weeks 1%, and then zero. Okay, that's the end of the growth is uh, the 13th of November. And then let's now look to the leaves. When they start to color, is the 13th of November a big match? So, in a few years, when your research is done, how will it help us? Forests help to mitigate climate change. The forest actually absorb, reabsorb 25, 30% of emission of CO2 that we human are emitting in the atmosphere. How this is connect to our research on the autumn? Well, if the autumn season will be longer in the future or not. And that hopefully will help us because a tree would reabsorb more CO2. So with all with data, we hope to put in our model and have more accurate projection of a climate change in future.